Hey guys, I want to show you how I solved a problem at my org where I wanted to calculate response time on support cases. Now, not only did I want to calculate that response time for those emails, but I wanted to do it within business hours, excluding weekends and holidays. To do that, I had to set up a few things with inside Salesforce, including custom fields and flows. So let me show you how I did that inside my org. Okay, so to do that, I first have to set up business hours in my org. So if you jump into setup and type in business, you can jump into business hours and set up either new business hours or just edit the default one there. Here you're going to be able to set your hours um, depending on the actual day of the week and also the time zone and whether it's active. We're going to need to actually copy the ID of these, this business hour. So you can either use something like Salesforce Inspector, which is a cool little Chrome extension to get the ID, or um, grab it from the URL. There will be an F0 at the start, so just make sure you don't um, hold on to that one. Um, we are then going to create some holidays, whatever works for yourselves as well, um, in the background. So create those holidays and assign them to the business hours that they relate to. Okay, so the next part is creating some custom fields. So on my email message object, I created two fields. I first created the reply to date. Um, this is just a date field that we're going to insert by the flow and a response time in hours. Again, just a number field that I'm going to insert via a flow. The next two fields that I created were on my case object. Um, I'm going to capture average response time in hours and max response time in hours. These two fields, you don't have to create, of course, um, but I wanted to actually capture all this information on the case itself instead of always having to look down into the um, email messages to gather the data. Okay, so let's figure out now how I actually get the replied to date on the email messages themselves and then calculate the response time in hours. So I actually created a scheduled flow for this. Um, and the reason why I use the scheduled flow is, A, I don't want to interrupt the email to case process. If for some reason something goes wrong with my flow um, and there's an error, it could potentially stop that email from coming in. And that's a pain. So um, the next thing is actually I cannot grab when an email message is marked as replied. So I'm not sure if you know, but email messages have different statuses on them, whether it's new, read, replied. Um, and those statuses change as things happen with inside Salesforce. Um, so when that email message changes to a status of two, which is replied, I can't actually trigger a record triggered flow of that. I'm not sure why, but that's just the case. So I went with the scheduled flow and it's a better one anyways, because if we have a bunch of these happening in the system, we don't necessarily need, need this data right now, real time. We can just gather it daily. So my flow is starting from the email message and your entry criteria might be a little bit different, but this is how I did mine. Parent ID is null false. So this is essentially, it's assigned to a case. The status is two, which is replied. And the to address contains my company domain. The replied to date is null true. So I'm making sure that that field is, field is empty at the moment. It's possible to reply to an email multiple times. I only want to grab the first time that it's happened. Okay, so then I'm going to get my reply email. So if I am looking at all replied emails, on uh, all replied emails, um, I am then going to find the email that was the reply. So to get that, I'm going to grab email message, get email message object, and filter out the reply to message ID equals my record ID. And then I'm going to ascend it by message date. So I'm making sure that I'm grabbing just the first one and I'm just grabbing the message date. Then comes the funky part. We've got this cool little flow action that is actually by Professor Flow um, and it is calculate business hours difference in Flow Builder. So what this does is that it's a neat little flow action that allows you to insert your business hours ID. So that ID we copied before and add in our start and end date. Our start date being our current message, sorry, our current email messages message date and our end date being the date that the reply email 
was sent to that email's message date. And then we can store the result in minutes into a variable. And then with that result in minutes, I'm actually converting it to hours using a formula. And then all I want to do is update my record that started off the schedule. So the replied to date equals um, the email message that was the replies message date. And then the response time hours flow um, uh, field is the difference in hours. So what that's going to do is if my business hours are, say, Monday to Friday, uh, 9 to 5 p.m., if I get an email message on Friday at 6 uh, um, that we haven't replied to yet, and it's at 6 p.m., if I reply to it on Monday at 9 a.m., let's say, or sorry, 10 a.m., then the difference in hours is essentially going to be one hour instead of all of that time from 6 p.m. all the way through to Monday at 10 a.m. So that allows me to be able to calculate what is actually our response time when we are actually working. And of course, if you have different uh, business hours, depending on uh, different regions, you could potentially do some things with decisions here and use a different flow action calling different business hours ID based off of maybe the person that replied to the case, maybe the case's origin, the customer's origin, um, whatever sort of works and makes sense for your business. So that's the first flow. The second flow is calculating that average and max. Now, of course, you could do this with something like Roll Up Helper if you have it. Um, otherwise, you can do this via the flow. Another scheduled flow that essentially is looking at the cases. I'm just looking at open cases, um, which makes sense for me. I'm going to get all of the replied emails. So um, where the parent ID on the email message is the case ID, the status is two, so they've replied, and they have a reply to date in there. And I'm going to grab all of those emails. Then I'm going to get the email with the max response date. So again, parent ID for that email message is the record case ID, <clears throat> and the response time hours in flow is null false, so that's already been filled in, and then I'm going to do it descending, um, so I'm grabbing the highest one at the top. Then I'm going to loop through this collection that I've grabbed from up here. <clears throat> I'm going to assign the total response time, so I'm creating a variable, just as a number variable, and I'm adding the current loop item through for response time in hours. So Let's say I've got five emails, um, that took two hours, that took four hours, that took five. I'm just adding that in and totaling that into one variable. And then I'm assigning the total email count from that collection. So again, a variable number and equals the count. So the number of email messages in my collection. So it could just be one, could be 10, um, whatever that is, gets assigned to that variable. And then I use those variables to create my formula, which is total response time divided by the number of emails that I have. And then I'm all just going to update the case with the max response time and the average response time. So my formula here for average, and then that other gets record element that was grabbing my email that had the highest response time in hours. And then I'm assigning that and updating that onto the actual case record itself. So that was my solution for how I calculated response time in hours within business hours for emails replied to on cases.